is interview session number one with James, recorded April 5th, 2008, copyright 2008 Wingmakers, all rights reserved. All right, uh, we'll get started. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome James to my humble abode here in Minneapolis. Yes, thank you for having me, especially on short notice, Mark. It's a, it's, it's a great honor to have you and, and to be hosting you um, here in my own home. <laughs> um, before we start, James suggested I give some background on the nature of this interview. So first off, um, my name is Mark Hempel. I've been doing the web management uh, for Wingmakers, Lyricus, and Event Temples uh, since 1998. So about 10 years I've been involved in it. And um, the email that comes in from these sites comes to me. So one of the types of requests that I see, maybe uh, two, three times a month, is from publications and radio shows uh, wanting to do an interview with James. Um, as most of you know now, James has chosen to be anonymous as the creator of these websites, so he's not exactly available for those interviews. And, uh, you know, typically in his, um, his style, he politely declines. Um, I guess it was about two years ago that I approached James with the idea that I would, uh, interview him using the most common questions that I see in the email I get, sort of an FAQ. And, um, and just kind of get his, uh, you know, his unique angle and also let people kind of hear his personality a little bit. And uh, for whatever reason, that never happened. But then out of the blue, about a week ago, Sarah called, who who works with James, and mentioned that James had a layover in Minneapolis en route to um, uh, Los Angeles for a meeting. And he'd have about four hours, and, and he had suggested that we do an interview. So here we are. I have James in my cozy work studio where I do my regular job. It's uh, the 5th of April, 2008, and actually by Minnesota standards, it's a pretty nice day. Uh, I can actually crack the window open a bit, um, so thanks for bringing the warmer weather with you. Well, I'll take no credit for that, but the feeling of this space is quite good, I agree. I would suggest that the listener imagine that they're sitting at the same table with us as this will help them feel the information better with their heart. We're planning to let the interview proceed, yes, without stops and starts, so it will be one continuous um, informal chat, and one that I hope will touch your innermost self. How oh, good. I'm glad you added that. Do you want to add anything else before we start? No, I think that's a good introduction. Uh, we can begin. Okay, good. One of the most common questions I get relates to the whole reality uh, you created around the wingmakers and America's <laughs> teaching order. Uh, I think people understand that it's uh, a mythology to some extent, but the the essence of the question that I get is to what degree is the information real? So um, could you please comment on that, James? Uh, yes, yes. Um, well, I understand the interest in knowing what is real and what is not real. It's um, fundamental to our natures. But in the case of an encoded mythology, it's not essential to distinguish between the real and unreal, so much as it is to feel its effects on your behavior, your point of view. Mm. When you read the materials, do new avenues of perception open up? Do you begin to see a new geometry into the subtle fields that surround you at all times? Do you feel more connected to your higher purpose? These are the more vital issues that require contemplation um, and review. I'll elaborate just a bit. The Wingmaker's mythology is an encoded work, which is to say that there are frequencies of light and sound that are woven into the music, chamber paintings, philosophy, story, and poetry. These frequencies are subtle in that they are, they are felt more by the heart than they are reasoned by the mind. Now, those who review the materials with only their mind, especially a mind that is settled in the historical view of God and spirit, they will find a very different experience than one who brings both their heart and mind and releases historical views. 
Mythologies and stories are actually the preferred communication of Lyricus, because they can appear more innocent, without the usual embroidery of fact-checking, mental analysis, comparison, and so forth, which are all attributes of the intellect and ego. To the extent possible, we try to diminish the possibility that the ego and intellect dominate the interpretation of the materials. <clears throat> you see, the historical mind is weighed down by the words and opinions of thousands of writers from the beginning of human history. The real import of the wingmaker's materials is to, in effect, dislodge the person from the historical mind and move them into a sense of connection to their higher self and the spirit that supports it. In doing this, the person can more easily access the tone of equality or the intuitive faculty inside their heart, which opens the channel to the living truth. I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the living truth. Uh, in one of your latest writings, uh, which, by the way, is a story called The Living Truth, um, you refer to this concept. So even back in 1998, when the Wingmaker's site was released, uh, you were thinking that this, uh, that this was the main or core teaching? The main teaching of Lyricus is to connect people more firmly with their higher selves and the spirit that unites each human consciousness to the cosmic or universal being. You see, Wingmakers is part of the facilitation of the Grand Portal, and the only way that humanity will open up to the higher dimensions is when individually, person by person, the entire species begins to see the truth is alive and well within themselves. While relatively speaking, it is lifeless and irrelevant outside themselves. Again, in the historical context of writings, the living truth is always relevant because you access it via the universal field that derives from the first source of the Creator. This universal field is also known as spirit and spirit-filled information can only pass from spirit to the higher self or the material self and when it arrives within the material self or human instrument when it successfully catches this information it creates new perspective which in turn creates new behaviors now these new behaviors may not be noticeable in a short period of time but they are nonetheless reshaping the life path of the individual. They create the ability of the individual to recycle their divine energies amongst the human condition. And this is done principally through the six heart virtues of appreciation, uh, compassion, forgiveness, humility, understanding, and valor. So the expression of the six heart virtues is the outgrowth of this deeper connection between the human self and the divine or higher self, quite independent of life conditions, what astrological sign you've been born into, whether you are male or female, whether you are well-educated or not, or your social standing. In short, the six heart virtues create the vibrational climate in your local environment that brings forward your higher self as an agent of spirit. I'll speak more about the living truth, but for now I think this provides a good understanding or introduction at least. Okay. Uh, let me switch to another question that I get frequently from readers, um, which is the Wingmaker's materials, uh, at least within the interviews and the Ancient Arrow book, uh, have references to, I guess I'll call it dark forces at least, um, and, and for some, they stir up feelings of fear and frustration. Uh, you know, these are 